So the title of this lecture is Diffusion and Membrane Transport. This concept right here is the reason why that soap was able to sink that paperclip even though I had it run down the side. Diffusion, very simply, it, it's, it's, it's a rather large concept and, and an overarching thing in not just biological science, but chemistry, physics, a, a lot of different sciences. Diffusion is very simply movement of particles from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration in a fluid. Movement of particles from from areas of high concentration, whoa, yeah, to areas of low concentration in a fluid. I'll try to expand that out just a little bit here. Yeah, so that's that's the goal there. And gosh, this is a natural phenomenon that happens all of the time. And I want to put in parentheses here, fluid. When I think uh, when I say fluid, most people think of a liquid. But fluids include both liquids and gases. Okay. Give me some examples. And I know that in physical science, I'm sure that you guys talked about diffusion. And, and, and you may even have touched on it in biology. But the reason I'm emphasizing it here is because you need to understand this before we can talk about how nerves work. In biology, the state standards don't require you in biology to study diffusion or membrane transport or even what the cell membrane is made of. So I'm backtracking just a little bit so that you have a good handle on these things. Okay, so can you give me an example? I mean, I guess you can give me back the example that I just gave you. What would that be? Examples of diffusion. Not everybody at once now. All right. Maybe it'd be easier to visualize. Okay. Ready? The soap's hard to see. Food coloring's not. That's diffusion. Now, a fair amount of it is sinking right now uh, because that food coloring is a little bit more dense than the water. But as you can see, what's happening at the bottom is that it's kind of expanding out already okay that's what's going on here so we're moving from areas of high concentration which were those little droplets of food coloring to areas of low concentration which is the rest of this container that doesn't have food coloring distributed throughout it now I just leave this alone for a little bit and it will all be blue when we check on it again unless my soap somehow messed up how it's going to do that but i don't think it will because if you've ever washed dishes in your sink at home and you should uh sorry then you know that you don't have to evenly distribute the soap the dish soap throughout the water it's going to work its way through there okay examples of diffusion food coloring and water And that's a that's a liquid example, okay? You could also put like uh, or uh, you know 
sugar in tea or Kool-Aid. You mix up tea or Kool-Aid, you put the sugar in there. Now, eventually it may all diffuse. It helps if you stir it for sure. But another one that you may not think about as an example of diffusion is perfume in a classroom. And there's a ton of other examples, okay? Here's a few just to start. Anybody have any body spray with them that you'd be willing? Would you mind if I borrowed some? What's it smell like? Vanilla? Okay. Can I, can I borrow five pumps of it? Okay. It's cold. Was this in your car last yeah. night? Okay. All right. I'm going to spray this vanilla. You, you said you're cool with five pumps, right? Okay. I'm going to spray this vanilla into this corner here. And eventually, you're all going to be smelling vanilla. Okay? Thank you very much. Because of diffusion. Now, you ladies are going to get it first. <laughs> and probably the most powerfully. So if you need to move, you can. And I can smell it over here now. But it will eventually fill this entire classroom because of diffusion. Areas of high concentration in this corner are going to spread out to areas of low concentration, which would be the rest of this classroom. Now, unfortunately, it's not just for good smells like vanilla. It works also for bad smells like BO, okay? If you've ever been in a classroom where someone either didn't wear deodorant that day or ever, okay? that smell starts to diffuse to those around and then the whole classroom so that's diffusion you're like well that seems like all chemistry examples mr helly what does that have to do with us in in anatomy and biological sciences has a lot to do with everything okay so let's go back to so oh i'm going to make one more note here Who's smelling it now? Anybody? I got it here. Okay. I can almost taste it. I probably should have went less pumps. Uh, one, one more thing I want to throw out here is the concept of what's called osmosis. Osmosis is diffusion of water. Diffusion of water. So if it's not just the particles, sometimes we're talking about water itself diffusing across uh, a space, okay? Diffusion of water. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little wavy line here. So we're not changing subjects, that's just kind of background for this next thing. And it's transport across the membrane. the cell membrane. Okay, there are three ways to get across. Okay, first is okay now and I let me draw a little picture of it uh, over to the side here we got our little phospholipids like that <coughs> okay phospholipids and that's the first way to get get across is through the phospholipids. But if you recall from our AMI lecture through the phospholipids, um, requirements, particles that pass through 
must be for things to pass through here if they're going straight through the phospholipids there's two requirements to make that happen what do those particles have to be what was it just the opposite hydrophobic so nonpolar or hydrophobic and then they also must be small they cannot be very big molecules okay so if they're going to get through the phospholipids they have to be both nonpolar and small so examples would be things like O2 CO2 um, alcohol etc things like that that are small and and nonpolar can go straight through the phospholipids well that's not the majority of things we need to get a lot more stuff through besides that okay what is another way Where it wasn't just these phospholipids, what else did we have in the membrane? Put a little one in there. What's that guy? Okay, no worries. Refresher here is through a membrane. protein now we're gonna make this like two different things depending on which way we're going okay because yeah I've got a little room over here I'm gonna see if I can illustrate this so here's the cell membrane and I'm gonna simplify here and and like we're kind of zoomed out here's the proteins Okay. If we have a high concentration of something, is everybody smelling some vanilla now? Yeah. Diffusion. You know, I think it happens faster than we can detect. Here's why. My dog Bentley, he likes these little kebab treats called good and mm, fun. It's like a piece of rawhide with a couple of pieces of fake meat on them that are all dried up and he loves to chew them up and it's his favorite. He can be across the house and I can quietly open the package and in about five seconds he jumps off of the bed and he's clicking his way into the kitchen because he can smell it. Like, because they have a way better sense of smell than we do. I think diffusion happens really quickly. Okay. See, I've got a lot of particles on side, so the outside of the cell. And we'll call this A. And inside of cell. And we'll call this B. Okay. If we open these gates up right here where are those particles naturally going to go from a to b or b to a well these particles here will they go from a to b or b to a What was it? Um, a Tell me why. Because there's more particles than A. Yes, yes. Okay. So, naturally, they're going to move. Okay. So, note naturally, particles travel from high concentration to low concentration naturally that's how they want to travel okay and if they do that through a protein okay um that's called 
a passive transport particles move from high to low concentration I'm trying to make that come up a little bit for you move from high to low concentration through a protein and no energy is required because this is really just diffusion they are diffusing through without any help I didn't have to apply any energy to make that uh, to make this happen okay I didn't have to apply any energy to make the vanilla scent fill this classroom it naturally moves from a high concentration to low concentration and that's with everything guys everything I thought I saw a hand up did it no I'm just dreaming I guess okay all right but what if guys what if we need to make things go from low concentration to a place where there's high concentration we can do it and your body does it a lot particularly in your brain and I bet you can probably guess what it's gonna be called then if this is passive transport what would the other be called active mm-hmm so active transport is particles being moved from low concentration to high concentration using energy Okay, from low concentration to high concentration using energy. Hey guys, what kind of energy are we going to use? What's the energy currency of all living things? ATP. ATP. Yep. We're going to use ATP energy. And we can force things to go against their natural flow. And it's really important, guys. Because... You, Remember how I told you your brain consumes 20% of your daily value of calories. Even though it's only three pounds inside of your head, it uses a tremendous amount. And mo a lot of that energy, probably the majority of it, is just fueling the process of active transport to shove sodium ions out and bring potassium ions back in. Okay, well that's good for small particles or, or small to medium particles and maybe maybe we'll mention that here. Um, small to medium particles. Okay, then what about huge stuff? Okay, huge stuff is going to need a different mechanism and this is number three. Okay, are we ready? Okay, number three. <coughs> and the cool thing about neurology is it does all of them. Number three is called um, vesicular or bulk transport. And this is where cells make vesicles to send huge things in or out. Okay? So, I'm going to use an example that you're already familiar with.
what's this I've just drawn? A synapse. Yeah. So what happens is these these vesicles will fuse with the membrane and then open up to release their content. So there's two different types of vesicular or bulk transport, or two different categories. And it has everything to do with whether stuff is moving in or out. Okay. One is called exocytosis. Okay. Exocytosis, which is what this is right here. Cells send vesicles out. That's exocytosis. And exo being out, cyto being cell, osis being process or condition of. And then the other one is called endocytosis. I don't know if I'll be able to illustrate this very well, but let's say for example we have, here's a white blood cell Okay, and here's a bacterial cell. All right, what happens is this white blood cell will more or less, and this is like the next picture here, will dent in a little bit to begin to engulf that bacterial cell. Like it makes a little vesicle. Ooh. And I moved it to a different spot here because I kind of forgot what I was doing. And then finally, it actually will consume it like that. So particles, so cells form vesicles around large objects to take them in. That's endocytosis. So this little blob here kind of makes a little dent in the membrane. That dent gets bigger and then finally it makes a little vesicle that will kind of just do this into the cell. It forms this little blob that comes in there and then this cell will break it down. All right, last little bit right here. Endocytosis can be broken into two different categories. Um, and they are what's called phagocytosis, which is cell eating if they're bringing in a large object. Do you guys remember I, we looked at the microglia and we said they're trash eaters? This is what they do. They envelop bacterial cells or various, hopefully not in the brain bacterial cells, but trash of various kinds. And then, and so that this is for solids. But um, there's another one called pinocytosis. And this is cell drinking. This is where they take in fluid from the outside and draw it in that way. So those are the main types of, of endocytosis. White blood cells and uh, microglia and various other uh, uh, types of cells are, are that will eat things. It's, it's, it's phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is a Greek word, it means to eat. So, and then pino is a Greek word, it means to drink. So if it's not taking in a solid object and it's taking in liquid instead, that's considered penocytosis. Okay. Um, I would like to entertain any questions